Okay, so before we do the site setup and then start looking at all these other uh, openings that look out into the site, the windows and, and all the other doors, we've got this very problematic uh, main entry that is going to require some extra setup. And so uh, before I can even put a door in there actually, I'm going to adjust this wall so that uh, I can make it have the extra thickness I want just in this portion here and only on this level uh, and so uh, well that's selected you can see there the uh, location lines on the outside well you can't until I zoom out but it is on the outside uh, and then I'm going to use the split tool, split element. So if you're not using that tool, uh, that's a really important one in the modify panel. You have there above the array tool, split element. And then I'm just going to hover on the edge of that wall and by eye pick up the edge of the, uh, the wall above there. So it lines up there with that face and then the same way to the side. So lining up with this outer face here and again just picking the edge of the wall there. Okay so now I'm going to select that wall and change the top constraint to level 1 and then I'm going to change the top offset to going to be a fairly sort of arbitrary height here. I'm going to make it minus 100. So I'll just show you in 3D what that's done. So I've got this wall here which is now finishing just below level 1. And the reason I want it to finish below level 1 is because I don't want this wall to show up in the level 1 floor plan at all. So now, even in this 3D view, I can go copy and clipboard and then paste align to selected levels and choose level 1. So that will put a copy, sorry, a copy of that wall onto the level above and now I can go and change the um, top constraint to parapet and just make sure the top offset is 0. So basically I've added in the section of wall above the one I've made and I'm going to change the base offset there to minus 100 so that the bottom joins with the top of the wall underneath. So basically what I have now is a separate section of wall there that I can modify and give a different thickness. Okay, so I, I know it might seem like a bit of a process but you just got to get used to that when you need to have walls changing thickness. I can join these at the top here to make that a bit cleaner. And so then again you can select this wall and it's an extra 1,050 we need to add. So I'm going to go to Edit Type, Duplicate, and so my new thickness is going to be 1,350. Edit. Change that. Oh, so I've the material by mistake. Just cancel this. Okay, so because it's on finished face exterior, that extra thickness should go towards the inside. And I've added too much, so what have I done? That's just 300 there. Oh, so I must have been, yeah, so 1,050 altogether, not 1,050 extra. No problem, I can just go rename and 1050, not 1350. There we are. So I've got now the wall lining up correctly and if I go to this plan when it's all black of course that's looking the way it should. So now to do the first part of this cutaway I'm going to put a drawer in and I really just need to make sure it's the right size. So I might just measure that size off the plan. So from the outside of the door jam it's let's say 9 970, 950, something like that. So I'm going to use a door and load family. I'm going to get an Australian door. That M single flush is not. So if we go to doors here, 
there should be one that is set up for Australia or even better if we go to the Revit library on the P drive just to show you one last time where that is here Revit library and then doors got a lot more to choose from there and we should be able to find something similar to the real door does anyone uh, remember what sort of entry it has? Big steel door. Oh, perfect. Okay. Easy. So we'll use the steel framed There we go. Single steel framed Oz. Oh, of course, yes, just copy the folder, it's big, so it's about 5 gig. If you're thinking about copying it, it'll take 20 minutes or something. Yeah. So I'm just going to go to Edit Type here, Duplicate, let's just say 950 is the size I want. The width there, we'll just make 950 for now, and then the height, again looking at this, it's hard to tell for sure. But it doesn't look like the highest door I've ever seen. So let's just make it uh, 2100 for now. And then I'll place it into that opening. And you can see that it's gone onto the outside, but chances are if I flip it onto the inside, it'll go obviously onto the inside wall. So flipping that the other way you can see then that the hinge is on the right side. But again I've got a problem because I want it to open out but it's going to be all the way on the outside of the wall. So you've got a couple of choices there. You could try and put another wall there and then cut through both of them but usually with doors like this you can have a look at the properties Let's see how it's been set up. So I'm just going to go to uh, So I'm just going to actually go to Edit Family and have a look at the uh, door family. Yeah, so we've got offset from wall here. You know, if I tell you what, I don't like this door. It's not actually the one I was thinking of because it should have a, uh, a setback distance. So I'm just going to switch to another file that I've got that has the door that I want. So I've forgotten what the name is. That's it, concept X C. Okay. So about that. So let's just do that again. Okay, so I'm just going to select that door and then go to edit type. And you can use this whenever you want to change a family to something else. Go to edit type and you can just use load. And then choose a different family. So that's the one I want. We can easily change that material to steel. There we are, that's better. So I don't want the jam changing thickness essentially. And that's turned up in a pretty good position without me doing anything much. Okay, so now all I need to do is cut away that, um, that angled section. And this is probably the most interesting part. I'm going to use model in place. So you're probably used to using that to make solids, extrusions and revolves and sweeps and other things. So what might not be obvious is that you can use it to make voids that cut almost anything else. So walls and floors, you can cut away anything you need to 
using the same method. So I'm just going to go here again to model in place. I'll set the category to walls. The category, uh, so the name, I might call it uh, entry void. And then under void forms, I'll go to void extrusion. And then I'm just going to draw basically by tracing the plan where I want the wall to be cut away. Now, I want to make sure it's symmetrical based on the door, so rather than drawing that second line, I'm going to select this one. Now I've just pressed escape to cancel the drawing of the line, and I can use mirror pick axis and pick the center of that door to make it symmetrical. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw some lines that come out from that wall and create a closed shape. I'll set the height for now to just 2100. It should be higher than this in the end, but that's the height of the door at the moment. Tick the finish. And, oh, now I didn't join that corner, so I'll just do that. Okay, so again, tick the finish in 3D. You can see there, it's created the void, but it's not cutting the wall yet. So when you make a void, and it's not part of a group of solids, you need to tell it what it should be cutting. And so you've got the cut tool for that. It's one that people will often see you know, when they start using join, but then not know when to use it. And this is one of the only you know, examples where you do use it. So using cut, I can choose the void, and then the wall, and there we are. Finish model. Now, it's got a funny top there because my door is probably a slightly different height because I didn't change it. 2110. If I go edit type and make that exactly 2100, it'll clean that up. There we are. And then later, if you want to put the fan light in, so there is a fan light there, you can see above the door, it's not a problem to come back and modify the void. So I'll just quickly show you that the very last thing, which is how to get back and change that void. Okay, so if I want to adjust it, the secret to selecting any void is to select the surfaces it creates. So the void is creating these angled surfaces. So if I hover over one of those, that selects the void. Now I can go to edit and place, then select the void extrusion and give it a different height. So let's say the fan light needs to be 600 above. In total that's going to be 2700. And there we are, now it's projecting above the door. So I can finish that. And you can see now we've got room now for a window. Okay, so that's, that's all there is to it, really. So it could open up a lot of possibilities. Once you know you can create voids in any wall, and you can use that for lots of interior applications, alcoves, recessed, um, you know, sections in your walls. It's good for lighting, all sorts of things, when you just want to cut away part of your wall and have a hole in it, essentially.